Okay, we'll continue with uh, Anderson's Prelim 214 Paper 2. Um, average difficulty is quite okay. Uh, I think you should be able to get an A if you if you really if if you had studied. So uh, not much difficult question, but. Uh, I think you you need to be very careful with the word you use to explain uh, to explain the different contexts of the question. So let's have a look. Okay, session A, question one uh, is your typical kinematic question. So starting off with a free body diagram, it is quite simple because you can see here the uh, speed is constant so there will be no net force meaning that the uh, downward acting weight will be equals to the upward acting air resistance so you just need to uh, label your forces clearly do not use short form like W and R go and write down the full name write down the magnitude and the unit and you should be able to get a full mark Okay, then after that, you are asked to calculate the uh, change in uh, gravitational potential energy. So how you do it is that you have to find the change in height. And you can find that uh, from the area underneath this line, uh, just here. So it's just a rectangle. Quite straightforward. Put in the numbers, calculate correctly, you will get the answer. Uh, then after that, uh, you are asked to name how the energy is uh, dissipated. Okay, so uh, some of the GPE is used as heat energy is used is converted into heat energy is converted to sound energy or the work done against the air resistance. Now in part D, this is what uh, I'm trying to say at the beginning of the paper. You need to be very precise, very accurate with your language, and you need to take note what the question is asking from you. So if you look at the question first, it asks you to explain in terms of the force okay and state the effect of the opening and all that on the motion so you need to pay attention to the requirement of the question you need to explain it in terms of force and you need to state what is the change in the motion so you need to keep these two things and two things at the back of your mind so start off with when the parachute open because that is the context of the question okay so start off very simple explain it in terms of the forces first so when the parachute open you can add that the surface area increased significantly and so the air resistance force increased significantly over a very short period of time so it's a sharp increase in the air resistance and because the weight is always constant okay the opening of the parachute will not change the mass it only change the shape so weight is constant and as a result okay the net force which is equals to w minus air resistance right and now the air resistance suddenly increase significantly in a short time the net force will now be actually upward at that very short instance so this part of the answer take care of the explanation in terms of forces Next thing you have to relate it back to the motion. So because of the upward acting net force, then there will be a sharp deceleration. So with the keyword deceleration, you you are telling the marker that okay now you are talking you are you are uh, talking about the motion. Okay now so the first part of this answer take care of, take care of the instance where the parachute was just opened okay you need to continue and describe what would happen when that particular instance has passed okay so once you have touched on the instance where the parachute just opened continue so eventually the air resistance would decrease until it is the same value as the weight so when that happened the net force will become zero so at that now the f net will be zero okay so that take care about the force again 
then again relate it back to the motion so because the net force is zero there will be no acceleration and the skydiver actually drops at a lower constant speed okay so with this structure you answer the question completely okay so that's what i mean by you have to read the question carefully and understand what the question is asking for and use the keywords okay question two uh. question two on your graph you won't have this part here this part here i drew it okay but we'll go in step by step okay because this is a velocity time graph if you are going to find the acceleration just find the gradient now the thing is when you are talking about acceleration remember the unit is second square and also remember to state the direction of the acceleration so in this case it is dropping and therefore the acceleration is acting downwards okay then after that is asking you uh, on what will happen if the stone is uh, thrown vertically upward on earth so on earth uh, it has a larger gravitational acceleration and therefore your gradient will be steeper and on earth there is an atmosphere meaning that there will be air resistance and with air resistance then you won't be able to get a constant or a uniform acceleration so you not only you have to say that uh, you won't get a constant acceleration you have to relate it back to the graph so you have to say that the gradient will not be uniform due to air resistance uh, did I forget to go through part A okay for part A uh, because this is on the moon so there's no air resistance so therefore you would be expecting a straight line okay so if you look at this graph if I ask you uh, when does the stone reach its maximum height so maximum height will always be when velocity is zero so this is where the stone reach the maximum height and because the stone will then change direction it, it will fall back to the moon's surface so the velocity factor will switch into the negative region and that's why you see as it falls the speed picks up so that's why it, it goes all the way down okay okay question three question three uh quite easy uh just need to remember the concept is p is inversely proportional to one over v so with the initial parameter given you can find out what is your constant k here and once you have that uh write out the formula again but this time with the new parameter since you have worked out what is your k you can then find out what is your new pressure so this is the one uh, for part B, use the formula P equals F over A, you'll be able to find uh, force. So the calculation part of this question is quite straightforward. Okay. Uh, then after that is an explaining kind of question. Uh, this one is quite straightforward. Uh, the question basically tells you that uh, actually there is an increase in temperature because initially they asked you to assume that temperature is constant but now they're telling you that okay so uh, please consider that the temperature is rising and deduce uh, what is the effect on the pressure so start off with the change in this parameter so when the temperature increase the molecule will gain kinetic energy and therefore move faster so the frequency of collision will be increased and the average force during the collision will increase so because p is equals to f over a so definitely the pressure will be increased so as such the actual pressure must be higher than what you have uh, assumed earlier on that's it okay okay your question four is just moment so uh a part 1 refer to your textbook A part 2 because it is in equilibrium meaning that the clockwise moment is equals to the counterclockwise moment and actually the calculation here is again quite easy you only have two forces so this force uh, you are taking moment about this period so this force will give you a clockwise moment this force will give you a counterclockwise moment okay and you need to be aware that 
when you're calculating the moment here, you have to take the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot. So this is the force, right? This arrow is the force. The line of action of the force is just an extension of this force factor. And you can see down here there's a perpendicular distance from the line of action to the pivot. And so that is what is the meaning of uh, perpendicular distance from line of action to the pivot. So down here, uh, the counterclockwise force from the tension is just T times A. Clockwise moment caused by the 2000 Newton is just your 2000 Newton multiplied by 2. In fact, uh, it didn't give you any other parameter to confuse you. So it is quite straightforward, 500. Uh, part B, part B uh, the way that the question is asked, can be quite confusing. So uh, how do you tackle this is that if you are confused by uh, the English words, draw it up. So what happens is that you have this force tension. Force tension is the tension in the rope, right? So uh, draw a rope. Okay, this means I cut open the rope, that will be your tension. Okay, this is your string. Okay, then, uh, and the force that the rope exert on the man. Okay, when you are pulling on to the rope, when you are pulling onto the rope, the rope is also pulling on you, right? So, this force that the rope exert on the man, that's the only meaning. Okay? When you're pulling on the rope, the rope is also pulling on you. So, what does Newton's third law say? Newton's third law basically tells you that uh, the magnitude of the tension force and the force that the rope exerted on the man will be equal in magnitude but in opposite direction. Okay? Same, I forgot to write down here the keyword, magnitude. Magnitude means the, the value of the force. How many Newton? Uh, let me switch on the lab. Okay, much better. Describe how the loudspeaker uh, travel through air. Uh, this is very very standard question, but you need to include certain keyword. The keyword is pull and pushed, compression, refraction, uh, propagation, and longitudinal wave. Once you have these few keywords, uh, your answer uh, will be complete. Okay. Uh, part B. Part B is your standard question. Uh, loudness is related to amplitude, pitch is related to frequency. Uh, part C again, this whole paper, the calculation is quite straightforward. You shouldn't make any mistake, but be very careful with the significant figures and uh, the uh, units. So if you're not sure, keep everything to 3SF and you should be safe. Okay, part B. Uh, part B, because sound wave uh, depends on uh, disturbance. So when your water is denser than air, meaning that your water molecules are packed uh, closer to each other, okay, then logically thinking, when you have something packed very close to one another, when you cause a disturbance, this disturbance can travel faster, faster through this medium. So Remember to state that water is denser than air and as such, the time taken will be shorter and that is because a denser medium enables a longitudinal wave to travel faster. Okay?